everyone, this is Robert with Mol3D. Today we're going to look at creating a slice or layer viewer inside of a program such as Maya. Sometimes when modeling or um, looking at or laying out our characters in, in a program like Maya, we want to look at the, uh, the, the, the cross-section data um, that's going to be printed at any given level. So um, this is going to be a very bare bones method, but it's actually quite effective for identifying um, overhangs and islands. So the first thing we want to do is set our timeline to uh, 1000. So you can just make sure you have these two bottom panels open and then change the 120 or whatever number you have there to 1000. That's going to simulate 1000 printing layers. And um, the next thing we want to do is create a polygon plane. So create polygon primitives plane. And depending on the scale of your model, you have to either scale this up or down. So we're going to go up until it consumes a large portion of the screen. All right, that's pretty good. So once we have that there, um, we're going to go ahead and freeze transformations um, and delete its history. That's in the edit. Um, freeze transformations and then uh, uh, delete by type, edit, delete by type, history. So we want to do both of those for cleanliness. And then the next thing we want to do is keyframe this. What we want to do is make sure we're on frame zero or one, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to go and right click, or we're going to click on translate Y and then right click and say uh, key selected. And then we're going to move the time slider all the way to the other end, a thousand. And then we're going to grab the, we're going to go into uh, translate and grab the Y up. If you're working Y up or if you're working Z up, grab the Z up. And we're going to move that right up to the top there. Alrighty, that's pretty good. So you have to be exact. And then, then go click on translate Y and then say key selected. And basically what happens is it's a simple, it's a really simple animation, right? But what we do get is the effect of isolating the contours of our model so we can identify areas that need support. So if we wanted to create manual supports in Maya, which I actually quite like, um, you can identify these overhangs and we could put a support structure there. And uh, if we go down a little bit, we could put one right there and this model would be fully uh, supported. Now this does not take into consideration internal supports or internal structures that are needed, but for this model that's printed on a FDM machine uh, has internal supports already via the infill setting. So that's pretty much it. Thank you everybody for watching this Mol3D tutorial. Please subscribe to us on YouTube below. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to check out the Mol3D website and please leave comments. Let us know what you wanna see. We're here to do more tutorials. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.